Greetings. This is Russ Anderson. Today I'm going to show a way to calibrate the two cameras of a stereo rig manually in a reasonably decent way. Now the images that I'm showing here were shot using the wide interocular distance rig that's described on the website so that they're approximately aligned a little to start with and we're going to do some fine tuning on them and ultimately this is something that's probably better done digitally where there are some additional fine points that can be considered such as the uh, lens decentering stuff can be handled more directly but this gives you a, quite a bit of insight as to what's going on and what stereo means and how your images really look. So I think it's pretty interesting that way. So I'm going to turn off the uh, grid and now we're going to set up this bottom display to show the anaglyph stereo view and rather than showing a red blue display I'm going to show a red cyan which just makes things a bit more visible. Now I've opened up the image preprocessor and it's working on the left camera image and I need to know roughly an estimate of the lens field of view. I'm going to say it's around 20 degrees with this setup. And here's the cool thing that happens. I can just go and adjust the settings to modify the left image and you can see the alignment of what's going on in the bottom image. So the game that we're going to play is to adjust things to make the bottom composite view line up the way that we want. Now the, the what we want is really the same thing as we did initially in aligning the cameras on set which is to take a point that's in the distance um, sort of at the back of the scene and align the cameras to converge on that point. So I'm going to use a point that's some leaves there and I'm going to just adjust the horizontal and vertical position to, to null those two together. Now if you look in the rest of the image you'll see that things don't quite line up. Any feature should really be directly to the left or right of its matching feature in the other view. So you can see if I change the zoom I can move things sort of vertically as well and be able to achieve that vertical match. The horizontal part, the horizontal disparity between matching things is due to their distance but the, the vertical part should really line up pretty well. The cameras don't have to be rotated uh, you know properly either so that's another adjustment that I can make and there's some interaction between all of these things so as I change the roll or I change the zoom you know I'm throwing off my original point a little bit so I, I'm just going to go back and adjust that again and you know if I go back and forth a couple of times you'll see that uh, you know I can eventually basically get everything to line up the way that I would need to. Like I said, this is something that you know computers can figure out, but it's kind of interesting to do an educational to do yourself. So at the end of the process, I wind up with something that's lined up at this particular point, and I've got the other things set up so that they line up horizontally um, with the matching features. Now the problem that you'll see though is now I'm missing part of the image because I've created this, you know, mainly the vertical shift is causing the most problems here. So I'm going to need to increase the zoom further to kill off this black part at the bottom and so that we have a full image. So I'm just going to do that. Basically I'm going to increase the zoom until that disappears completely. Now of course that's gone and now messed up, 
my alignment. So at this point, I'm going to go and close up the image preprocessor on the left camera. And I'm just going to the image preprocessor to the uh, other camera instead. Uh, here we go. And I need to set up the field of view appropriately for it also. And now, basically, I'm going to need to match the zoom that I created to uh, do away with the, uh, the, the black border at the bottom, the missing part of the image. So I'm going to need to match that zoom with what I, you know, to get what I needed here also. And I can add a little adjustment here if I need to to make sure my points really are lined up right. And so now I have both images lined up. The matching features are across from one another and um, converged on the point that I want to be. So I can close this up. And now you see it's going to go through and, and recalculate the view for the entire shot. And we need to actually let that happen for both of the images. So I have my left and my right to worry about. And now I can go and switch back to what's probably my regular glasses. And now we can play through our shot and you have everything lined up and all the images there and so on. So your next step in the workflow here is to do a save sequence for each of these two cameras. And then those are going to be what you're going to use going forward. Those are going to be what you track. If you're going to add, you know, now you synthesize to do 3D tracking and add computer generated effects into the imagery. So now you have those two nicely matched up images. You've reduced the eye strain, gotten a better effect. So I hope this helps you understand more what stereo is about and what this whole alignment process is about. And I think you can see that it's you know, it's something that you can do with a relatively simple rig. You can go out and shoot some of your own stereo stuff and have some fun. Take care.